fifteen days. I know, and I don't want to do it because you get your stuff going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after a brief technical difficulty, I think we're back up. Welcome to Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce update on all things uh, emergency corona related. Um, we are a service chamber. You go to our website, coastalvachamber.org, for our mission statements. We were originally having this program at the Ziegler Center, but we do what small businesses do best, which is to adapt. This evening, we have three very timely guests. Morgan Davis from Town Bank is going to give us an update on the Small Business Administration's Paycheck Protection Program. We'll be joined later in the hour by Senator Jen Keegan's nurse practitioner on the front lines of the coronavirus battle. And we also have with us Jason Miaras from the House of Delegates who will update us on the governor's orders and what it looks like moving forward. We can take your questions if you'd like to text them. Uh, we'll be here for a, a, an hour and we will start now by throwing it back to Morgan Davis of Town Bank. Gary, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. It's an honor and it's a privilege. I'm going to try and give you some useful information that uh, small businesses owners that are listening can take to a practical level where you can get some money to help you. Um, this program, the CARES program, for information, if you forget everything I say, and by the way, these things are my interpretation of the program. So what actually is, is uh, written, while well, I think we understand it, is subject to interpretation. Go to treasury.gov, their homepage, and you'll see right on their homepage where you click for information as a borrower, as a lender, and summary bullet points about the program. The CARES Act stands for Coronavirus Relief, Aid, Relief, and Economic Stabilization. The reason that's important, this is not a stimulus program, it's a stabilization, which means the government wants to get the money in your hands quickly. So my, my advice to you is the big don't eat the little in this, the quick eat the slow. The money is limited. It sounds like a lot, $350 billion, but I want you to put it in perspective of the size of our economy. There are 30,000 small businesses in the United States. There are 5,000 banks. Of those 5,000 banks, 10 banks have about 80% of all the activity in the country. So imagine with 80% of the business, you probably, those 10 banks, have, a pro, have their, all their wheels greased. They're doing the best they can to be ready for Friday, April 3rd, 48 hours from now, when applications can be accepted for small businesses. There's another deadline of April 10th where independent contractors can apply. So whether you're an independent contractor, a sole proprietor, or a, a business, you have two different deadlines. One's this Friday for most of you that are listening and independent contractors is April 10th. Why is it important for you to be quick? There is $350 billion to be split up um, that is based primarily on protecting paychecks. So we'll call it payroll. Annual payroll in the United States is about $6.4 trillion. If you figure what two and a half months of payroll is for the 30 million small businesses in this country, it's, our, it's between one and a half and two trillion dollars. There's only 350 million here. We are expecting insatiable demand for this. So it is likely this 350 billion dollars will be gone quickly. So where, where should you go to get the money? I'm not, this is not a commercial for my bank. This is a public service message that you should go to the bank you deal with. Wherever you deem your primary banking relationship is, that's who you should call go to their website and see what to do. Most banks have the application on their website or they have a person that can make it available to you. These, these applications are gonna be electronic. So filling them out, they, they have the ability for you to have the electronic signature. You won't need to come in the bank to fill out applications. It's all can be done electronically and the directions are on the treasury.gov and the SBA's websites. So, with all of this money out there and what we think is insatiable demand, how do you get the money? What is required is for you to fill out a two-page application. It looks simple and straightforward, and it is much shorter than most government applications, but it is still complex. What makes it complex is what you have to certify 
your average payroll is for certain periods of time. Generally, these are the three hoops you have to jump through. You have to have been in business on February 15th of this year and prove that you were a business operator. You have to say which, show what your average monthly payroll is. For resorts and seasonal businesses, it's a different calculation. You'll look in the application and you'll, it'll show you that you'll use last year's time period from February 15th to June 30th to calculate your average payroll since your busy season is just getting ready to start so that you can use a more fair number as to what your average payroll is. Then you will multiply your average payroll times two and a half with some exclusions. Don't get bogged down in the details. Just know this is not for paying rich people. If someone makes more than $100,000 a year at your company, they can own, you can only include the payroll up to $100,000. There's some other ads to what, is, what payroll costs are that involve healthcare costs, funding and retirement plans, and so on. Those are delineated in the application. But the thing to remember is you can get two and a half times your average monthly payroll if your loan application is successful. The money that is being provided is not coming from the SBA. It is coming from your bank. Your bank will hope that we can turn around at some point in the future and get our money from the SBA, but that will only happen provided the application is complete, accurate, and, the, and, and that the SBA has the money. So we're going to put our money out, all the banking system put our money out. There's another program the SBA has where they put out their money. It's called an, an emergency, uh, uh, an economic injury disaster loan, EIDL, which is under Section 7B of the government, whereas these loans, the payroll protection program, the paycheck protection program is 7A. That's a completely different loan. That's not a loan to be forgiven. You can borrow up, up you can borrow a lot of money in that program, but the government has $10 billion set aside for that. And there's an interest rate with that that is 3.75%. $10,000 of that, the first $10,000 of it is deemed to be an emergency grant. And you, the statute says once the application is received by the SBA, they're supposed to give you the money in 72 hours. I will tell you, everybody, the systems, are, they're hard to get to. The systems are crashing. You need to look at the emergency uh, in the economic injury disaster loan program and see how you can apply for that, which is completely separate from the PPP program, which is where you can get one half of 1% interest for two years with the first six months of your payments completely deferred, which means in effect, you have 30 months to pay back a loan at one half of 1% interest. Who doesn't want that? What is even better is if what you say is true in terms of what you use the money for, which is mainly payroll, I'll come back to that, then this loan will turn into a grant, which means you'll have to pay nothing. So you can see if somebody says, well, the worst thing I have to do is pay a half a percent interest over, I don't have to pay anything for six months, and I have 24 months after that to pay the loan back. If it is a loan, that's a pretty good deal. And if it is used for the appropriate purposes, I pay nothing. So you can see why the United States small business world is lined up to get this and why the banks will be overwhelmed, why the SBA will be overwhelmed. So the reason I say go to your bank is banks have to do something for the government involving the Bank Secrecy Act and something called beneficial ownership. It's complicated, it's messy, it's intrusive, it's no fun. But it's the government's way of helping us fight terrorism, the world terrorism, by collecting information to know who is really behind these businesses and where the money's going. If you've opened an account at your bank recently, you know what that's like. So that information your current bank has on file, that will have to be part of the process of getting your loan approved. Going through that information request with a new bank where you do not bank will take time, slow down your application, and run the danger of the funds running out. So that's why I encourage all of you to go to whoever your primary bank is to get this money. Now, how do you calculate two and a half times? The, 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 the money you can borrow is up to two and a half times your average monthly payroll. Two times your payroll, 75% of that has to be for your payroll. And whatever your payroll was on February the 15th, 
you have to prove that on June 30th this year or eight weeks after you get the money that that you have maintained that payroll level or increased it. So you go, well, I've already laid people off. What happens about the people that I've already furloughed? You, this the bill is designed for you to bring those people back to work or to bring back a person to replace them. So the idea is to put people to work and keep them working. The challenge you'll run into is because if you have laid someone off or if someone looks at what the unemployment transaction, unemployment uh, numbers are like, they'll see that they can collect their unemployment plus $600 a week. Some states it's 26 weeks, some states it's 13. The bottom line is if you go, apply for unemployment, and by the way, they're crashing over there too. They're all lined up. They may say to you, even though you want them to come back and be on your payroll, you know, I think I, I might be better off not to work for a while. Now, the Secretary of Treasury doesn't think that's going to happen, but I'll say as a practical matter, people, some people are going to say, maybe I'll just ride this out for a few months and then I'll see what happens. So it's going to be a very difficult thing in some cases to get people to come back to work for you. Nonetheless, what you are doing when you borrow this money, which can be up to $10 million, you are saying to the government and to the bank that takes your application, I certify that I am going to use this money, at least 75% of it, for payroll and no more than 25% of it for mortgage interest, not mortgage principal, but mortgage interest, utilities, and rent. Now, in order to certify that, you're going to need to provide not your tax returns, but your payroll tax information so that you can show I had this much for payroll is how I determined what my average monthly payroll was. And when June 30 comes or eight weeks after you get your loan, that your payroll is at least 75% of what it was on February 15th. To the extent you use the money for other things than payroll, and which you can do, then that portion of the loan will not be forgiven. So, if you cannot show that you use at least 75% of the money you borrowed for payroll, you're going to have to pay some of it back. It's called forgiveness. That loan forgiveness is not taxable to you. So it's in your best interest and everyone's for 100% of the money you borrowed to be for the purposes outlined in the application, which means at least 75% of it has to go for payroll and the other 25% can go for some specific uses like rent and utilities. Now, if you think it's compli the application is complicated, which some of you will when you look at it, know that it is designed to try and be simple, but in being simple, it opens up a lot of questions. In the application, it'll say number of jobs, number of jobs when? Well, the day of the application, some, some interpretation there. Is a part-time employee one job, or is it a two part-time employees or one FTE? These are questions, these rules of engagement have not been well defined by the SBA. But filling the application out as honestly and best you can is going to get you the quickest response because there's going to be a check as to whether what the State Corporation Commission says you were open as a business on February 15th. Your, your payroll tax data will be looked at and the SBA makes it clear this is all subject to criminal fraud penalties if you do not show in this application exactly what was filed with the Internal Revenue Service in terms of your payroll taxes. So you've got to be very careful about being precise, which means for some of you who are a little unsure about payroll, your accountant, your attorney may help you with this. There's a provision in this act for agents, as attorneys, accountants, and other folks are called, to help you with making this application. And they will get comp compensated for that. They cannot charge you to do this. They can only get paid from the banks, any fees the bank gets from the SBA. So, so that you'll know you can have someone help you with this application, but they'll, and they can't charge you to do that, but they can get compensated and will get compensated by the bank that makes the loan. Morgan, that's an excellent summary of a very complicated subject. I know we'll have a couple of questions come in and we will post some of these links on our website, again, that's coastalvachamber.com. And of course, absent of any of fraud, Morgan, if, if somebody's numbers are not right, it simply means 
that a portion of the loan would be forgiven, not all of it. That's and true. even then it's at a low rate. So we'd encourage members um, to, to be quick. I will tell you, Morgan, you're exactly right about the unemployment and my big calculations show that it, it comes up to an absurd sum of over $50,000 a year. And not all of my employees make 50,000 a year. So it leaves a little bit of dilemma. My people wouldn't lie and say they had been fired. But on the other hand, I feel an obligation to look in after my people. For my firm, and everybody will make their own call, what we'll do is we'll participate in the program because we have been hit. The courts have been shut down. But I will see that a substantial portion of that is given back to the employees for the short period of time to make sure they're not paying me for the privilege of, 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 of coming and working. But every business is going to need to set out their uh, set out their own perimeters. And let me just say how refreshing it is to have a banker suggest they use a competitor. Uh, I'm sure he'd love to have your business at Town Bank when things calm down a little bit, but that is excellent advice, Morgan, and I appreciate on behalf of all of our members you taking your time out of what must be an incredibly busy season. Well, it's it's good to be popular, but I know why I'm popular. It's not for the right reasons, but I'm popular because we got money, people want it. And we're ready to we're ready to dole it out because I think every bank looks at this not you know, half percent we can't we're not gonna make we're if we're not gonna make service. Money. We're just trying to keep things because it's in all of our best interest to keep people working. And even if they stay on unemployment for a while, because it is like twenty some dollars an hour with the unemployment numbers. Uh, at least they've got money to spend, so uh, uh, we, we just need to get this money out to where people can use it and be effective, whatever the source, whether it's directly from the SBA, from your bank, or from the unemployment checks. All right, good. Now, if our technical people think they can plug in Senator Jen Keegan from the front line of coronavirus, we will plug in the good senator. Right now, how many uh, are you getting a lot of calls and you're getting in, just inundated with, with yeah, clients right now? That right now, it is all our, it's almost all our people are doing. We're busy as most banks are right now. We're forgiving, but we're not forgiving. We are deferring principal and interest right. payments to some of the hardest hit businesses. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're busy changing that so you don't, you don't have to make payments right now. Talking and trying to educate people on this program. And then, believe it or not, there is some loan demand. People are still borrowing money. So, yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you are you still saying, even with the current hit, you source people trying yeah, to normal commercial loans? There is, there is, there's still lending activity, but I have to say it is, it is reduced. And you can yeah. see the fall off the past couple of weeks in terms of the number of, of requests. There is still new business out there. But remarkably, some people are still wanting to build a park. I mean, I, I say remarkably, oh, I people yeah. are still coming out of ground and then you go, Maybe maybe we'll be thinking about waiting, but you know they're 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 moving forward anyway. No doubt. Well, yeah. God bless the small entrepreneurs who are going to keep this economy moving while we're in transition. Absolutely. While we're in a break here, I'd like to thank uh, Dick Olenek at Spectrum Printing. You guys know him as the Happy Printers. Uh, not only has he been very very helpful with the chamber, you might notice that as a public service, uh, Spectrum Printing has been offering free of charge uh, sheets on the COVID-19 virus and best recommendations from CDC. And these are without charge. You can uh, come by Coastal Virginia Chamber headquarters and pick some up. Or although I'm sure our friends at Spectrum Printing at the Happy Printers would be happy to leave some outside for you. <laughs> All right, while they're trying to get a hold of uh, Jim Kagans, why don't we go ahead and jump in with Jason Miares. You all know Jason. He's a member of the House of Delegates, a, a local attorney and son-in-law to what used to be the most hated man in Virginia Beach, the treasurer, John Atkinson. I guess he's probably happy to shed that title. Is that right? Yeah, I think he's enjoying his retirement very much. So. Jason, yeah, give sir. us the latest. Well, I appreciate you having me. I appreciate uh, the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce. I think as we enter these very difficult economic time. I think it's the voice for small business owners is needed more than ever. So thank you. I was commenting to some people in my law firm today, imagine your life, remember your life on March 1st, and then remember your life on March 31st. And I think all of us have uh, recognized very quickly just how drastically our world has changed. 
I think in some ways anybody who knows how this is all going to end probably isn't being very honest because I don't think any of us uh, know where we're going. I do know this. I think as Virginians, we have survived war, famine, and a lot worse situations than this, and we're going to come out stronger. I think at the same time, all of this is probably recognized for everybody watching, everybody in this room, that the things that really matter are family, those we love. Um, but it also means that we have to find a way to both navigate this public health crisis and at the same time ensure that people have jobs to come back to. And I will tell you, um, as an elected official, the one thing that I think you're seeing both at the federal level down to the state and local level is one of the things that elected officials are dealing with uh, that we're trying to get our arms around is just the volume of information coming at us is unlike anything I've ever seen. I mean, I could literally be on a conference call probably four or five hours a day every day with different groups. And so what I am trying to do and have been doing is trying to narrow my focus on what seems to me at this time on a host, and it could be in almost every different category, whether how the, the Small Business Administration is handling their loan applications, for our loan officers or their banks, for our medical capacity. It's all about capacity. Uh, the heart of this is a capacity issue right now. Uh, what the main thing I'm asking when I'm on conference calls and the data I'm asking when I talk to people at Centera and others is right now where is our ICU capacity because that's really really critical if you've seen how the, our country is tackling versus comparable nations it seems that the nations that are able to get the best handle on this and have a much lower death rate is those that are not overwhelm their hospitals and by that it means I get people that ask me all the time even now, with everything on the news, well, isn't this just like the flu? And I know when we get Jen, uh, Senator Keegan's on, she'll be able to, to touch base on It's not. It's much more infectious. I was on the phone just earlier today with an ER doc that is a, a friend of mine in my neighborhood. And the way he described it is somebody comes in with a flu, one, it's a much lower percentage of people, uh, fatality rate, than COVID-19. But somebody with a flu will be in an IC unit maybe three to five days. With COVID-19, they're going to be in ICU unit for 7 to 10. So not only is it more infectious, it's infecting more people, but they're literally using their beds more often. Um, right now, the last briefing I got is our ICU capacity in the Hampton Roads area for our regional uh, hospitals is about 89%. So we haven't reached max capacity yet. We are getting closer. Um, but the question I'm always constantly asking is how do we raise our medical capacity? How do we make sure these IC units and these hospitals can actually clear beds out and raise our medical capacity. And that's what lowers our death rate, much lower. For example, you see in Germany, the death rate's at 0.38%. Um, you look at a lot of other areas, it's much lower than what has happened. And we've seen the horror that has happened in Italy, where it's much, much higher. It's because they've been overwhelmed. Now, at the state level, Morgan, you did a fantastic job summarizing the different initiatives by the federal government. And the analogy I'd use is essentially because of all the quarantines and the stay at home and the self-isolation, we have essentially put the United States economy on a, in a, in a, in a for lack of a better term, a medically induced coma. Uh, we are a consumer driven economy and it goes back to the heart of who we are as a people. When we deal with crisis, we want to be around people. It's one of the ways we've always managed whenever we dealt with tragedies in all of our lives. It is against how we are wired, at least I know for myself, it is against how we're wired to basically have to change our regimen when we're dealing with a difficult time to isolate ourselves and be away from people. And so what that means is we're going to have to change our habits. And I think the first thing I would press upon when I talk to these ER docs that are such brave individuals going in every day um, to try to care for those, and they're literally at the front line. And the one thing that, when I ask them, what do you want me to pass on to constituents, is respect the fact that we're here by doing what you can to self-isolate to the best of your ability, which means to limit your exposure. Um, you know, the governor at the state level, uh, we, can't, we can't print money like the federal government. We're mandated by law. We have to balance our budget every year. My expectation is we're probably going to go into special session later this year to readjust their state budget because so the tax revenues that we were expecting and we, we passed, the General Assembly passed the budget, was based on December or January's um, 
revenue forecast. Well, obviously that has fallen off a cliff. So we're probably gonna have to go in later this year, but what the, where the governor has and state government has an enormous amount of power, actually more than the president, is in a public health crisis, their ability to do uh, quarantines for the general public is vast. And this is not new power. You can date back to the malaria epidemic of 1793. <laughs> I've done a lot of research on this. We have given state governments and state uh, governors an enormous amount of power, dating back to the 1700s in this country, of how to tackle public health crisis uh, like a pandemic like this. Um, and so the governor has issued a variety of executive orders, 53 and 55. I'm losing track. The most important thing you need to understand is, is, is 55, the one that the governor just signed in on Monday. Um, I know from talking to different people in the administration and on conference calls I've been on, uh, they were very distressed to see uh, particularly the beaches of Virginia Beach. As I like to say, Virginia Beach acted like Virginia Beach. It was warm weather. And where did everybody go? They went to the beach and they brought two or three of their friends. That is great to do in a warm, nice spring day. It is uh, not the best thing to do when we're trying to limit the uh, curve and limit the number of people that are going in. So I can't stress to the people enough right now, our beaches are closed with two exceptions. If you're there for exercise or if you're there for fishing. Now, exercise does not mean you can't lay your uh, towel on the beach and read a book and say turning the pages is <laughs> exercise. You need to be either either walking or, or running, something along those na along that nature. Um, this technically a class one misdemeanor, but listen, the police are there. They're not there to, to make your life miserable. They're going to give you a warning. I have been told they're not going to just arrest people on the spot. They will give you a warning and say, listen, respect your neighbors, respect those first line responders, get back, um, you know, self-isolate. If you're on the beach to exercise, you're fine. If you're on the beach to fish, um, that's fine. But that that's how they're going to um, arrange that. Our courts are closed. Um, which is, I know, a challenge for both Gary and myself as an attorney. They're right now close through April 26th. My expectation is actually probably going to be longer. Traditionally, the courts have been closed uh, whenever schools have been closed. Now, I think we're a little bit unique in the fact I don't anticipate the courts being closed through um, the June, uh, I think it's 10th is the executive order of the stay at home, but my expectation is it probably be able to pass April 26th. What I've been told uh, is we're going to basically peak in about two weeks is a little bit what our expectation is. And then we may see a drop in the growth of infections. It's going to be a hard two weeks. Um, I think it's going to be a sobering two weeks because the lack, the, the testing lag when you get tested versus getting your results, I mean, we're seeing a little bit of a lag in, it's about seven days. So actually we're gonna see in about seven days a lot of the socialization we saw this past weekend. And you can see a real, real uptick. And it's gonna be a challenge as Virginians. It's gonna be a challenge for those um, at, on the front lines. So number one, uh, respect that, self-isolate. Two, understand what the governor's executive order says. Uh, limit how often you, obviously you can go out to get groceries. Our restaurants cannot take any um, uh, sit down. It all has to be takeout. Um, places of worship. I know my my place of worship. My my church does it online on Sunday mornings. I know pretty much everyone is doing some type of Facebook live event. Um, but be respectful as well. Be respectful where we are. Um, as far as unemployment benefits, we have waived per the executive order. We we waived the the usual uh, one week delay. Um, and unemployment had been additional 13 weeks of, of unemployment benefits. I know that on the healthcare front, the Virginia Medical Reserve Corps has been activated. That's actually was instituted after 9-11. And so we are flooding. If you are looking to find ways to volunteer for your hospital or as far as a great one shop, one website with a lot of great links to it with state government, where you can volunteer, where you can get information about coronavirus closures, unemployment benefits, go to virginia.gov. That's www.virginia.gov slash coronavirus. That is an excellent website that they have placed with a lot of very, very um, excellent information. Uh, for renters, I know for a lot of people that they have been uh, laid off. Um, right now, all eviction proceedings, partly because the courts are closed, also by an attorney general's opinion, 
have been uh, stayed. Uh, so there's no eviction, no unlawful retainer proceedings. I do want to be clear, if your tenant does not mean that your rent is forgiven, it simply means essentially right now everything, almost view it as a pause button. So I would encourage you, if you have not done so, to negotiate now with your uh, landlord on a, a either reduced rent or a or how you're going to figure out how you're going to um, perhaps read a negotiated settlement of a reduced rent or percentage of rent. I talked to a commercial real estate landlord earlier this week who said that uh, he'd already negotiated with his tenants basically 25% of their monthly rent. Uh, everything is negotiable, and I would encourage everybody to try to work with their landlord. Your landlord wants you to stay there. Uh, if possible, they'd like for you to stay there. Uh, we are fundamentally a good and decent people, uh, and I know we give more money to charity than any country on the planet, and so I'm confident everybody's listening. Work with your landlord to find a way to negotiate, renegotiate where you are all eviction proceedings are stayed, but when, uh, whenever this moratorium is lifted, obviously your landlord can, can proceed as possible. If you're a landlord and you're wondering what to do, just understand under the CARES Act that if you have any type of uh, federal-backed uh, mortgage uh, in any way, that, that there's an automatic at the federal level, and federal law trumps state law. is a 120-day uh, moratorium. You cannot even begin the proceeding of any type of a collection of, uh, as far as a court proceeding, collection of rent. Um, we, we've gotten several questions on that as well, yeah. Jason. And what I've told my folks is that those of us who can pay their mortgage, I mean, let's do that to keep the system as solvent as possible. But anything that's under an FDIC or guaranteed, there is a, a, a holiday on the repayment, but that is not a forgiveness. You don't want to end yourself up in a, in a bigger hole. Uh, Morgan, we did get a couple of questions here. One question is regarding the uh, keeping the employment levels the same. I take it it does not need to be the same employee. In fact, in an extreme example, if you fired one employee for whatever good and sufficient reason and replaced them with another employee, that would not disqualify you. That's correct. It's, it's not the person, it's the job. I'd say it's, it's so you can replace a full-time employee with two part-time employees. You, so it's not doesn't have to be the same uh, human being. It's the number of jobs. Gotcha. Okay, All right. We have another question here that just came in. Uh, a question about loans. This is from uh, a nice lady, Mary. I have a friend who has a house cleaning business. Her clients are declining the appointments. Some for she's had 20 years. Are there any options for slow solo business owners? to qualify for the loans? The answer is yes. And as a, if that is a sole proprietor, sole proprietors are, can apply this Friday, April 3rd, along with small businesses. Small businesses being defined essentially as less than 500 employees. Another question that came in, uh, people on Social Security, are they going to get any benefits? And how about people on Social Security disability? Will they be getting checks as well? Um, that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I don't think if they're not employed, I don't think they'll be getting any checks. That's, uh, I, but I, it's, that's a little out of my wheelhouse. They are getting, my understanding is they should get $1,200 for my understanding every adult. Um, oh, that's right. But, oh, Social but, Security and recipients and disability, people on disability. I will confirm. I will, if they... they yeah. And the next question would be, hopefully, that wouldn't kick people off their disability because, as yeah, you know, yeah, they keep yeah. those folks on a very I, short I, leash. I think every adult making seventy-five thousand dollars a year or less will get twelve hundred dollars. That's what I understand. This that. question in from Randy Lamarck. Uh, I may have missed it, but when will Town Bank have applications available for the SBA PPP loans? Well, the suggestion is that you should go to your own bank that you have a relationship with, as Morgan was explaining. In order to limit terrorism in the United States, a bank has to verify who you are, and it's a convoluted process. And they, as he's told us, fast is quick, fast is better. So if you have a banking relationship, um, you need to go to them. Morgan would love to take your business when this crisis is over, but I think he's got what he can handle. We will have the forms available on coastalvachamber.org, uh, but 
You really need to go to your dot com. You really need to go to your own bank. Is that right, Morgan? Yes. And for that particular question, if you can't find the application on our website, or if our banker can't get it for you, go on the SBA's website. They have the application on there, and you can download it from the SBA's website, and then send that to your bank. To us. Jason, there was a question for you. Excuse me. Yeah, um, what, do you in, anticipate the governor calling his first special session uh, anytime soon? We have to balance our budget under the Constitution. And it, while it's not happened since I've been elected, I've been talked to other people that have served in other years where the tax revenue forecast definitely does not meet expectations. They have to go back to special session to readjust the budget. I have not heard anything definitive. That's, that's my expectation, just knowing these numbers as they are. To, to piggyback a little bit what Morgan said for those listening, and earlier he had mentioned we, we have a $6.4 trillion of annual payroll in America. You have 30,000 small businesses and 5,000 banks. So the $350 billion allocated for these loans, I think the expectation is that's what's allocated, which means when the pot is gone, the pot is gone. The banks are going to be overfilled. Now, my expectation is they're going to go back into Congress and pass subsequent uh, legislation. But I think there is a fierce urgency of now for everybody that's listening, everybody that's a member of the Coastal Virginia Chamber, is to get your application in. Go to your current bank you have a current relationship with. Uh, so they already have you verified, so you begin the process. But I think there is a, there is a great sense of urgency. Don't wait until you know next week. Try, if possible, to get in early because uh, the demand is going to be absolutely astronomical. Uh, we have Senator Keegan's joining us by phone. Uh, Senator, do you have any later word on a special session, and, and how goes it on the front line of the coronavirus battle? Hi, Gary. This is Jessica. How are you guys? Very well. Good. Sorry about the Stay healthy and stay well, stay out of the hospital. 
Senator, you know, I, I have a doctor's appointment set for Friday, Friday that was turned into a, a telephone call. I suspect that we'll never fully go back to the old way. I, I, it seems to me to be much more efficient to, to be able to have a direct conversation where there's a focus. I want to put you on the spot, doctor, and give me the over-under for the apex in Virginia. For the impact of the crisis, when I think it'll be. Yeah, when, 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 what day will we have our, our, our largest volume of infection? <clears throat> You've settled an argument with me and my wife. She's been a big fan of the mask for a while. I, I thought it didn't make any sense, but I'll be I'll be guided by you. Uh, uh, we are almost at the end of our hour, uh, JP. We got some more questions. We got a question or two here for our group. Go ahead and throw them out. I, I got it for uh, Morgan. Uh, Randy called in and said, "I've already been in touch with my town bank loan officer, Nancy Oliver. Thanks." And Francis replied, Nancy Oliver is the best. So uh, kudos <laughs> to one of your employees. But Christy asked, do you use the 2019 payroll figures if you increased your staff at the beginning of this year or and now it's more, more staff February versus last year? Use, you're using the February 15th uh, uh, numbers. So you can use the higher number. If you've hired extra in January and February, we want to keep the employment at that level. So that's the February 15th. If you had enough foresight to expand your business, I don't, I don't know if that was a good call or not. Here's one other question. And Senator, uh, this could go to you or uh, Delegate uh, Myers. Uh, the question again about going back for the special session, you're obviously going to have to go into the rainy day fund because of the tax and uh, second quarter, the first quarter is going to be terrible. Basically, I'm paraphrasing here. What uh, is the rainy day fund going to be enough? Senator, you want me to take this, or you you want to? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I, I, I'll go ahead. And, well. Yeah, I'll go ahead and answer. My expectation is I don't know because I haven't seen the latest numbers. Secretary of the Finance. Uh, is going to brief the General Assembly, and we will have to make an assessment later. Our current fiscal year for our last budget um, actually runs through June 30th. Uh, there is some discussion that the rainy day fund 
may be enough to be a stopgap. We don't know. I mean, some of what what we are trying to figure out in the CARES Act, which is such a massive $2 trillion bill, is money that is going to localities to help cover uh, the COVID-19 response. And does that in some ways enable us to restructure our budget? We don't know that yet. Like I said, right now we're still in the information gathering phase, but it may not be enough to cover the rainy, rainy day fund. We may not go back until uh, early to midsummer. We, we just don't know yet. And we, we do have discussions right now we're going back for veto session, which is right now set for April 22nd. There is some discussions right now whether that will be done remotely or not. We're not 100% sure. Uh, there is an off chance we may stay an extra day. Uh, but, but my position is we're still trying to get a handle of where our finances are that we'll have to come back, say, in May or June for special session. It could be that we have to go beyond the rainy day fund. Can we, you vote? Do you expect quite a bit of help from the feds on this? Directly well, that's, to one the of the, that's one of the that's one of the requests the states are making to the feds is to basically get federal infusion to help um, uh, balance our budget because we we can't run a deficit we have to balance our budget. Question is now, uh, can you guys vote remotely? Because Congress can't. We can if we change the rules, and that requires a quorum. And I've already said since I'm one of the younger members of the General Assembly, I'm happy to come back to do a quorum if need be. Um, because we do have older members, but I'm happy to give them that 51 seat uh, quorum so they can change the rules, allow us to vote uh, remotely. We can, we have to change the rules first. We don't want to offer Jen, we need her here taking care of people. Yeah, Jen, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, I'll just add that, uh, you know, we did the last day of session and we had Senator Steve Newman stand up and say, you know, that we did this coronavirus, COVID-19, that's just started, we don't know where, where the Last state budget that got passed increased state spending by 18% and had 16 different tax increases and had, by one count, 46 different new causes of actions for people to sue their employers. So there was a lot of discussion. I know I got a letter today from the National Federation of Defendant Businesses, the Voice of Small Businesses, um, who had sent a letter to the governor saying, please do a delayed enactment for a lot of these legislation that is going to increase the labor and the regulatory costs on our small business owners because of uh, the impact of coronavirus. Don't know if the governor is going to make that decision or not, but yeah, this state budget was passed in a January economic outlook, and we live in a totally different world now, and I don't see any way we don't come back and readjust it. Well, thank you all for your participation. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, Coastal VA Chamber dot com is our home page for our new service chamber uh, our future events are going to include brian cannon from one virginia uh, jason miares was a real hero on this battle to get nonpartisan redistricting uh, it is on the ballot this fall as a constitutional amendment your chamber will not be taking positions on many political issues but our board of directors unanimously voted to endorse the constitutional amendment that Jason and others have worked so long and hard for. So um, please share us your ideas as to who you would like to see other than the normal elected officials, city council, county commissioners, 
Um, we will be back with updates on the state and federal programs. And until then, uh, I'm Gary Byler, your chairman. Call us anytime. Thank you, J.P. Godsey, Max Shapiro, Yusuf Tiada, and all of the folks that made this broadcast possible. Mostly Morgan Davis, Jason Meares, and Senator, uh, Senator Keegan's. Uh, thank you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. you uh, all right! Time. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good job.